Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're, another thing I figured I'd try out is the uh, Aroma congregation said I could borrow this sometime, and I thought I'd give it a try to our Lent services. So if I'm uncomfortably close, you can tell me later, and maybe we won't do this. But we're coming out. We're a smaller crowd, and I'm going to ask for a little bit of conversation. Like I said, we're going to keep it pretty simple today. Uh, but we're talking about confessing our faith. And the point of confessing our faith is not me confessing your faith. It's you confessing your faith, right? Uh, and so that's part of our, um, our focus here uh, this evening. So um, we're going to, like I said, I'm going to ask for some little bit, but it'll, be, it'll all be over real fast. It'll just be a slight pinch, and then it'll all be better. Um, and... Uh, we're going to start by asking, um, what is Lent all about? And so, like I said, we're keeping it simple. It only has to be one word, and you can kind of shout it out. Uh, what are some words you think of when you hear Lent? What's Lent about? Repentance. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Suffering. Suffering, yeah. Jesus, yeah. Confession, yeah. Yeah, I think we, you guys got a pretty good handle on Lent. Um, and in fact, uh, there's, there, it's a season of all those things. It's sort of a different feel sometimes to be a little somber, a little different than the rest of the church here, and we think that that's okay. Uh, it's a time to prepare for Christ's suffering and death and uh, to take time to think about that. And, and kind of the idea is also that we, we kind of have a little, we're holding it in uh, until Easter, and then we explode with joy. Uh, it's not a necessity, uh, but we think it's a helpful way. Lots of people over the course of, of many years have found it to be a, a helpful way to express our faith. Um, so let's take it a, a little bit further. Let's imagine that you know someone with no real connection or history within the church and um, they ask you, even better than what's Lent all about, or why are there fish fries on, on, in March in many churches, or why is there a cross on your forehead? All those could be entry questions. But let's say you get to the, the real question we want to answer. Um, what does it mean to follow Christ? What does it mean to be a, a Christian? Um, what kind of answer might you give? The author, Will Campbell, tells the story of how one of his Friends had been badgering him for a short definition of Christianity. His friend wasn't really looking for a, like a laundry list. He didn't want to memorize the, law, the, the small catechism or hear the Apostles' Creed. He said, I'm not too bright. Keep it simple. In 10 words or less, tell me the Christian message. Um, so if you were asked to describe um, the Christian message... What kinds of words, and there can be overlap, uh, what kinds of things would you use to describe what does it mean to be a Christian or a follower of Christ? Again, salvation, that's a good one. Love, blessed, all, any others? Hope, yeah. Yeah, I think those are all, all because uh, we're all, we're, if we think about we're the goal here, I'll tell you the goal the goal is for us all to kind of come up with a confession of our faith that is, that we're going to talk about different aspects of it, but for everybody to come up with a, a short phrase, seven words or less, that you can use to confess your faith that is a variety of things, faithful, um, but also personal uh, to you, that, uh, that makes sense to you, but is also faithful to the scriptures. In business, it's sometimes known as elevator speech, which is the idea that you should be able to describe your, whatever you're selling, your product or whatever, in the time it takes to ride an elevator. Um, because the, often we have, we have conversations with other people, they, they can often be pretty brief, right? We may only have a short snippet of time uh, or a brief encounter or maybe 140 characters. Uh, Christians don't exactly have elevator speech, but we do have something else. We call it confession. Not, not a confession of sins, uh, although we do do that, 
Um, and that is a big part of Lent. But now we're talking about confession of our faith, being up front, uh, sharing what it is that we believe. The scriptures are clear to, to be a Christian is to identify with Christ, to confess Jesus as Lord. And in John chapter 4, the apostle tells us, whoever confesses that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And Peter, in our reading for today, encouraged us to plan ahead, saying, always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give for the reason, for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. As Christians, uh, we confess and believe the good news of Jesus. What is the good news? Who is Jesus? And does my faith change my day-to-day -day life, or is it just something I believe? There's a, 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 lot of, a lot of misinformation, a lot of misinformed views, or sometimes even, I would say, misrepresentations of what Christians believe and live. But we have an opportunity or we will, to set the record straight. Now, we probably, none of us will probably be interviewed on public television or anything like that, but the people around us, those who are closest around us, uh, are, are an opportunity for us to share what Christianity is really about. Or perhaps even there might be other conversations with people we don't know so well, but we have uh, an opportunity uh, to set the record straight, to let people know what our Savior and what our faith is really about. Back uh, in 2010, an article was published in a Christian magazine called The Gospel in Seven Words. Um, and the author invited 15 prominent theologians from around the country to give it a shot. And he gave them only seven words, and some were a little better than others. And here's a couple of, of the better ones. Um, uh, and here we go, some examples. Um, could I get a, a, a volunteer to read? We have three different volunteers to read one, two, and three. All right, Britton, read first one, and Be Becky, and then Clara. Yeah, go. Okay. In Christ, God's yes defeats our no. And Becky. God, through Jesus Christ, welcomes you anyhow. God was in Christ, reconciling the world. All right. Yeah. So those are all. You know, you see, notice that they all have different words. I think understood rightly, we could agree that all of those are, are true. They help us. Maybe they come from a slightly different angle, you know. Um, but uh, they all help encapsulate what the the, the Christian faith is life, um, and. They highlight different aspects of the gospel, and they summarize it in different ways. But I think you could, you could make an argument that, that, that nonetheless, they are all faithful. Um, but our focus is to help us try to think about and ultimately maybe even find seven words that you would choose. Um, always be prepared, Peter says. Always be prepared, being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. If someone asks you what you believe, or why you go to church, or what it means to be a Christian, could you articulate it? Could you come up with a, a reason? Be honest with yourself. Would you say, well, it's kind of complicated, or, you know, I'm not real good at explaining things, or maybe, uh, how about uh, you talk to my pastor? Maybe he'll tell you what I believe. Uh -huh. And he, that's, not, that's not exactly, I think, what Peter's aiming for when he says, always be prepared. So our goal is to help us think about and be a little more prepared to confess that hope that we have in Jesus. Uh, to that end, uh, we're gonna, the goal is to work together a little bit. We'll reflect about who Jesus is and what, what it means that we're his people. And we'll have some different examples and we'll get even get we're going to have a little bit of non non confrontational maybe that's not the right word uh, hopefully not too intimidating opportunities to talk about this uh, as well we got um, but and by holy week hopefully we'll have everyone might have seven words that they can pull out at any moment and say 
if someone were to ask, oh, this is what I believe, a simple, concise way to share the gospel. Uh, it's not a requirement that we have to do that, of course, but I think it would be kind of helpful if we had a go-to, here's what I can say in a situation, I don't know what else to say, instead of saying, uh, you know, we have a little phrase that makes sense to us that we can explain if someone asks, well, what does that mean? Or, oh, okay, tell me more. Um, but for the time being, don't stress out too much. We're not going to let anybody, uh, we've got six weeks, we'll work together, we'll do it in very manageable chunks, and I'll continue to give more direction as the weeks go on. Uh, your only homework this week is that I, I encourage you to pray at least once, asking for God to, to help you to come up with an answer to give to people who ask you, and perhaps even to help you to come up with a short confession of faith that it works for you, that is faithful to the scripture as well. Um, and as we remember, as it's Ash Wednesday, that we are dust and to dust we shall return. Here's another summary of the gospel that was written by the Reverend Martin Coppenhaver, if I pronounce that right. Um, he was a, a president of the oldest theological school in the nation, Andover Newton Theological School in Massachusetts. And here's how he put it, and he only needed five words. Uh, he said, uh, God gets the last word. God gets the last word. Now, you could make an argument, perhaps that's a little vague, but nonetheless, it really helps express something very appropriate, especially on Ash Wednesday. Tonight, we're wearing ashes. We repent, uh, but not just with words. Grief over our sin uh, spills onto our heads and our hands for uh, others to see. It's a, sombering real, a sobering reality. The wages of sin is death, which means that each of one of us has earned our plot in the cemetery. For dust we are, and to dust we shall return. And yet, Copenhaver reminds us, even on this Ash Wednesday, even in the face of our own mortality, even with our own mortality on our face, even with our guilt, God gets the last word. And that's the point of Lent, really. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. While death awaits all who sin, that means all of us, God, through the victorious resurrection of his son, gets the last word. The last word is a word of grace. It's a word of forgiveness. It's a word of life and salvation and peace with God. And that's God's word for you today. You are at peace with God, you are loved by God, and you are forgiven by God. In Jesus' name, amen.